Hello everyone! Welcome to part 3 of the Long Hacks Challenge for Polish ships. Finally! I know it took ages, but we are finally back with the Polish ship challenges. And this time with Kyohaba Kinkuni. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? As always, special thanks to my lovely patrons and all of you who subscribe and watch these videos. You are keeping this channel alive and going. Thank you very much, and I hope you will enjoy. To be completely fair, Kunime was always in the mood for a hug, so this challenge ended up being a welcome surprise. Sure, he had to figure out the right moment to be certain he wasn't keeping his already busy boyfriends from something important, but that was a small price to pay for getting affection. And it could even help settle some things. Namely, the Shigeru issue, how he started mentally calling it. As jokey as it sounded, having one partner feeling neglected was a huge problem, one that could spiral to worse pretty quick if left unaddressed. Especially with someone like Yahaba, who, as much as he tried to hide it from Kindachi and him, suffered from a serious case of abandonment issues. Fortunately, they at least managed to convince Yahaba to talk to them, but that was only one step of the journey. They had to do more if they wanted to keep their relationship stable. What are you thinking about so hard? Torn from his thoughts, Kunime turned around, finding Kindaichi watching him with a tilted head and tired, yet curious look in his eyes. Somewhat guilty for not noticing his boyfriend came home already, he got up and gently pushed Kindaichi onto the nearest chair before he settled on his lap and wrapped himself around him like a koala. His main target was Yahaba, but since Kindaichi was already here, he could as well start with him. Oh, okay, cattle's already. A soft chuckle bubbled in his throat after the initial shock disappeared. Are you that touch star do you have to jump me the moment I come home? Yeah, I've been here alone the whole day. I deserve some cuddles. He snuggled deep into Kindachi's arms that wrapped around him almost immediately, letting out a content sigh. It had been a while since he had Kindaichi just for himself outside of their bed, so he intended to enjoy this to the fullest. And there was a lot to enjoy these past few years since Kindaichi bulked up into his previously lanky frame. Though thinking about it, it was mostly his fault for missing Kindaichi's hugs. Even in their current relationship of four people, he still felt the closest to Kindaichi as he was his first love. No matter how much he loved Yahaba, and as of the last half a year Kyotani as well, Kindaichi was his go-to person with any and all problems and longings, affection included. However, Kyotani's hugs just wiped with him so much he somehow forgot to ask for hugs from Kindaichi as well. Maybe good Yamagata came up with this challenge, for more than one reason. You're thinking too much again. He hummed and then relaxed back into Kindaichi's embrace, leaving those thoughts for later. And you are enjoying this too much. Of course I do. It's been ages since we got to be like this. Just the two of us. A soft kiss landed in his hair, the gentle touch of the large, calloused hands on his lower back making him shiver. I have to enjoy it to the fullest. Feeling a bit guilty for neglecting his beloved, Kunime hummed in agreement and instinctively started to comb through Kindaichi's hair with his fingers, relishing the little sounds escaping Kindaichi's mouth. He really was like a dog grumbling in bliss when getting his ears scratched. The thought made him chuckle and mumble quiet, cute under his breath. 
However, his happiness was cut short by Gindaichi's stomach rumbling loudly into the silence, the sound chasing heat into Gindaichi's cheeks. Um, you wouldn't happen to have something to eat on you, would you? Kinyime raised his eyebrow, and Gindaichi blushed even more. Don't answer. I ran into that one, I know. You did. There's some tuna in the fridge. We could make onigiri if you want. Gindaichi's face brightened immediately, and Kunyumi couldn't help but mirror the smile at least a little bit, despite knowing making dinner meant an abrupt end to their hug. But he couldn't possibly let his boyfriend go hungry just because of his sudden neediness for affection. And so he reluctantly got up from Kindaichi's lap. Not before he got a kiss, though, and tucked on his hand. Let's make you something to eat, then. You're the best, you know that. Catching Kyotani not busy while it was just the two of them proved to be a bigger challenge than Kunime thought. Now that the league finals were coming up, both Kyotani and Kindachi were working their butts off to be fully prepared, both physically and mentally. Which meant Kyotani spent most of his free time either exercising or studying his potential opponents. Kunime didn't want to bother him during either of those situations. But he didn't want to wait for the whole week either. And so he decided to risk it and wait until Kyotani set to his usual study session on the couch, approaching exactly at the moment Kyotani got comfortable. Watching matches again? Kyotani hummed in surprise as if he didn't expect him there before giving a short nod. Yeah, I got my hands on the arrows last match and I needed to take a look at their defense. It could be nasty if we went against them without prep. He glanced up again, raising his eyebrow. Want to join? Or did you have some other plans? Um, kinda both. He slid gracefully next to Kyotani and wrapped his arms around him, hiding his face in the broad shoulder. For a second, he felt Kyotani freeze. But then the strong arm he became very familiar with in the last month or so wrapped around him like a safety belt, pulling him closer to his side. Trouble sleeping again? As if guided by the soft tone, Kunyumi hummed quietly in agreement despite feeling pretty rested that day. He wasn't entirely sure what it was, but somehow Kyotani's embrace alone was always enough to lull him to sleep no matter how much his occasional insomnia was acting up. Perhaps that was one of the reasons why he found himself falling for the otherwise gruff man so fast. No wonder Shigeru wanted to be with him even when they were at each other's throats. Speaking of Yahaba though... Did Shigeru talk with you? Hmm? He's been feeling lonely recently. Did he talk to you about it? Judging by Kyotani's furrowed brow, he did not. Kunyume sighed. Dummy. I mean, I noticed he's been acting a bit weird recently, but I had no idea he's lonely. Wait, did he talk with you about it? Yeah, with you too. I guess he's too scared to tell you though. Stupid. As if I would berate him for that or something. He fell silent for a while, obviously thinking about what Kunyume just told him. Kunyume led him, kicking his mind to work himself to try find some sort of solution that wouldn't leave one of them feeling abandoned. He could understand Yahaba's hesitation to tell Kyotani about his feelings. It had never been easy for him to open up. But on the other hand, if there was someone who would stay by his side no matter what, it was Kyotani. So why the reluctance? Why the fear? Did he tell you why he feels like that? He gets jealous sometimes when you give attention to me. 
And then he feels horrible for it, so he clears the space. I guess that's why he doesn't want to tell you. Because he's scared you'll think less of him. The realization hurt. He didn't have to be a mind reader to know Kyotane wasn't capable of feeling anything but love towards Yahaba. Yet Yahaba couldn't see it despite being together for over five years already. He blinked in surprise when he got tucked closer to Kyotane's side, a gentle kiss landing in his hair. Let's do something about it when he gets home then. He closed the laptop again and leaned back, apparently deep in thought. Didn't you say you have to study Arrow's defense? That can wait. Shige has a priority. Kunyame smiled. Graph outside and all, but when it came to Yahaba, Kyotane was just one big softy. He rushed home as soon as possible, pushing the train to move faster and almost running the rest of the way to their house. All that just so he could get a moment alone with Yahaba before their other two boyfriends would arrive. Yesterday ended on a pretty high note with the three of them taking care of Yahaba's every need and desire, which seemed to surprise him, but in the end he managed to relax. However, the fact that he was surprised by their care was concerning on its own, and let them know the issue was rooted much deeper than they thought. Hence why he shoot away the voice in his head telling him his Achilles tendon was going to hate him for running without warm-up, and sped up even more until he arrived home. He only got a few minutes to catch his breath when the door opened again, this time letting Yahaba in. Oh hey, I didn't know you were home already. Kunimi shrugged as if he didn't feel the still present redness in his cheeks. I finished earlier today and our boss was in good mood. I just arrived though, so I don't have any snack prepared. Yahaba gave him one of his warm smiles, stopping for a kiss before he headed around Kunimi into the kitchen. That's okay, we can make some now if you're hungry. Well, I was more worried about you. You are the one with physical job. He followed after Yahaba. Determined not to let him slide back into the circle of taking care of everyone but himself. He was rewarded with another smile, his heart fluttering whenever their hands or sides brushed. It was amazing in its own way. He would have never thought someone he loved for so long could still give him butterflies with a simple touch. And yet, here they were. Yahaba was just that special. Why doesn't he see it? Let's take it to the TV. I bet you are drained after today. Me? I'm telling you, you are the one with physically demanding job. I just sit in the office the whole shift. Doesn't mean you can't be tired. Mental work can be exhausting too. Kunime gave up and grabbed one of the plates with snacks, turning away to hide his reddening cheeks. Much to Yahaba's amusement, it seemed. But as long as Shigeru looked to be in a good mood, he could deal with heated cheeks. They settled next to each other on the couch. Kunime waited until Yahaba turned on the TV and then wrapped himself around him like an octopus in an almost perfect mirror of his yesterday's position with Kyotani. Similarly, Yahaba froze, but unlike with Kyotani, he didn't relax. On the contrary, he stayed still with hands hovering in the air as if he didn't know what to do with them, his breath hitching. His heart also started racing, enough for Kunime to feel his heart beat through their skins. What's that for? Kunime frowned, leaning his chin on Yahaba's shoulder to look up comfortably. Can't I hug my own boyfriend just like that? I guess, but why so sudden? Furrowing his brow, 
Kunime straightened up a bit, but kept his arms around Yahaba. He didn't understand. Yahaba never seemed to have an issue with accepting hugs, so why the hesitation? Sudden? Well, yeah. You usually go to Ken or you for hugs. You know, since you said I'm the worst pillow you've ever had. Oh. There was the issue. Kunime cringed inwardly when he recalled those exact words leaving his mouth about half a year ago in a half-joking tone, which, coincidentally, was the last time he remembered going for a hug with Shigeru when it was just the two of them. Not because he didn't want to, but just as Shigeru said, he usually went to Kyotani or Kindaichi for affection. How could he be so stupid and don't see the pain he was unintentionally inflicting? Perhaps the real reason why Shigeru felt lonely did lie with him after all. And he was completely blind to it until now. Shit, how dumb can you be? Realizing how deep his words cut despite him never meaning them to, he snuggled deeper into Yahaba's arms, tightening his embrace a bit more. Sorry, that was mean of me to say. I don't think you are a bit pillow at all. Maybe not as warm as can, but I still want to hug you. If you want, I mean. For a while, neither of them moved. Then, finally, Yahba relaxed and returned the embrace, albeit a bit hesitant at first. But Kunime was going to take what was given to him. Sorry. No, don't be. It's okay. It wasn't. Kunime knew that well. They really had to step up their game. All of them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh man, I missed Polyship Challenges. A lot. I know, I should have written some parts when I was missing them so much, but it's not that easy, okay? My brain just doesn't work like that. But I'm very glad that I can get back into it and that I am for once actually on top of my writing for the channel, which is awesome, because it means more content for you. If you have any requests or ideas, the request form is linked in the video description. See you next time.